Now that we've talked about all these different aspects of rational functions, we're going to go through and analyze the complete graph of a rational function. Maybe we'll do a couple of them. Uh, this first one, uh, what I want to do is I've got a rational function here, but I want to pick apart all the different pieces. Uh, and I've got a six, well, seven step process here, I guess, six and then the graph. Um, and we're going to try to lay out all the different pieces of information based upon these seven steps. Um, your textbook has a seven step process, but it's going to look a little bit different than the one that I have here. Um, it's just organized different. It's basically the same information, just organized in a different way. Um, except their sixth step, I think, uses a graphing calculator um, to plot the graph. Um, I'm going to look for some other points that the book doesn't really talk too much about, uh, but I think are important. Okay. Um, so anyway, the first thing we're going to do, and really when we, when we uh, analyze the graph of any rational function, you're going to want to factor and find the zeros at the top and the bottom. So you're going to factor the numerator, factor the denominator, find all of the factors, or uh, find all of the zeros, okay, resulting from those factors. Then we're going to find the domain, the vertical asymptote, the x-intercepts, and the holes. All of those things can be found directly from the zeros of the top and the bottom. And then also the multiplicities are going to be important because that will tell you the behavior of the graph at the vertical asymptotes and x-intercepts. Okay. Then we're going to write the fraction in lowest terms if possible. So if there's a, a factor that's common to the top and bottom, you cancel them out. Then we're going to find the y-intercept. That one's kind of a simple step, uh, not too much involved there. Then we look for the horizontal and oblique asymptotes. There's only going to be one. Can't have, uh, it can't have a horizontal and an oblique. It's got to be one or the other. Um, and then we're going to find the points of intersection with those two lines. So we've talked about the idea that a graph cannot, uh, a graph is going to approach a horizontal or oblique asymptote but not touch it as it goes off to infinity, right? But a graph can cross a horizontal asymptote somewhere nearer to zero. Okay, an example, just very briefly, an example might be if you have a horizontal asymptote maybe a couple of vertical asymptotes. You could have a graph that maybe looks like this on one side, like this on the other side, and maybe in between it comes up, crosses the horizontal asymptote uh, like so, and then goes up to the other vertical asymptote. In which case, even though on the ends here, it won't, the graph will not cross the asymptote, it could cross a horizontal asymptote somewhere in the middle, okay, somewhere nearer to zero. Same thing with an oblique asymptote. If you imagine taking the same sort of graph and just tilting the horizontal asymptote, you could have a similar situation occur on, a, on an oblique asymptote. So we'll find those points of intersection. I think they're um, important to a graph as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to do this as much as I can without the use of technology uh, like the graphing calculator, but maybe referring to it at the end just as a check to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Okay. Okay, so that's our layout. And then the final step is to plot the complete graph. Plot all the different pieces that we found at the beginning um, and make sure they all work. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is factor. So the numerator here actually doesn't factor, right? 2x minus seven, you could pull a two out and call it x minus seven halves if you wanted to. <clears throat> um, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna leave it as 2x minus seven. The denominator, however, does factor. Okay, the denominator factors into x minus 7 and x plus 2. If you're not sure where those come from, remember that you're looking, if the leading coefficient is 1, when you factor, you want factors of the constant that add up to the middle term. So factors of negative 14 that add up to negative 5 are negative 7 and positive 2. Okay, and then those go into parentheses. Okay, so now I have my factors done and I gotta find the zeros, okay? So to find the zero of the numerator, I just take that numerator, set it equal to zero, and solve for x, right? So I add the seven, two x equals seven, divide by two, x will equal seven halves. Now because we're gonna be plotting the graph of these things, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in decimal form so I can more easily identify it on a graph. That would be 3.5, okay? Seven halves, 3.5. All right, so I know 3.5 is a zero of the numerator. Um, 
The denominator also has zeros. In fact, because x minus 7 and x plus 2 are the factors, that tells me the zeros are at x equals 7 and negative 2. Right? We change the sign on those. We just set them equal to 0 and um, you know, add the 7, subtract the 2. That'll work. Okay, so I've got three zeros, two for the denominator, one for the numerator. That's it for step number one. Step number two says to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, x-intercepts, holes, and multiplicities. Well, the first thing is the domain. Okay, the domain, remember, is um, basically all real numbers except where the denominator is zero. So you got to pull out the zeros for the denominator. We have two such numbers, okay? So the domain, and I may want to start setting some of these things aside. Um, let's organize this differently. So over here, I'm going to say the zeros of the top are, well, it's just the one. It's just 3.5. Zeros of the bottom, and that is 7 and negative 2. Now, of course, normally I would put numerator and denominator. I'm just saving some space because I've got a limited space on the board here. <coughs> um, OK, so I'm going to set those aside. I'm going, to be, I'm going to have to erase a few times just to make sure I have enough space here. Um, so the domain is everything except the zeros of the denominator. And so I would write that out as um, the domain. If I wanted to do the interval form, for instance, I would have negative infinity. Well, the negative 2 actually comes first in order. So I'd go negative infinity to negative 2, union with negative 2 to 7 and then union that with seven to infinity. Okay, so that'd be my interval form. Or you could just do set form, um, and you could say x such that x is not equal to negative two and seven. You could do something like this. I'm not too worried about it. Either of those are interchangeable, okay? All right, so that's the domain. Now I'm gonna look for vertical asymptotes. Remember, um, vertical asymptotes occur when you have a zero in the denominator that's not a zero of the numerator. In this case, there were no shared zeros, right? There was no zero in both the top and the bottom. So I'm not going to have any holes. Remember, holes occur when you have a zero on both at the same time. The same number is a zero of each. So there aren't going to be any holes. I can actually write that in. No holes. That's kind of nice. In the vertical asymptotes, there's going to be two of them. Right, it's the two numbers that were zeros at the bottom. So vertical asymptotes are going to be um, at x equals 7 and at x equals negative 2. Okay. Uh, the x-intercepts. Now the x-intercepts are going to be the zeros of the numerator. Okay, only. The numerator only. But again, because there's no shared zeros, we'll be all set with a 3.5. So the x-intercept is at... 3.5 comma 0. All right. So I'm already building my graph, right? I'm getting a lot of information that I can use. The multiplicities are going to be very important as well. Notice all of the factors up here have powers of 1. That means my all of the multiplicities are odd. Okay? Because they're odd multiplicities, we know that a vertical asymptote, the graph will approach them in opposite directions. So in both of them, it's going to be opposite directions. And at the x-intercept, we know the graph will go through the x-axis rather than touching it. So it's going to cross, I guess, is the word we've been using. Sometimes I say through, sometimes we say cross. <coughs> okay, so it's going to cross the x-intercept, and it's or across the x-axis, and it's going to approach the vertical asymptotes in opposite directions. Either one's going to go up, one's going to go down, or the other way around there. Okay. Okay, so that covers all of number two. Number two just deals with analyzing the, the as much as we can based upon the zeros and the factors of the um, rational function. Number three says write it in lowest terms. Well, here, the only way you can write it in lowest terms or, or lower terms than what it's given is if you have a common factor. Here we do not, so we can actually skip number three. We don't have to cancel anything. Part four looks for a y-intercept. Okay, so with a y-intercept, you're going to set the x equal to 0, right? So f of 0 is what we're looking for. So you get 2x, oops, sorry, no, not 2x, 2 times 0. 
And even before I go through and just plug in all the zeros, just think about what happens. Any term with an x will become zero, right? So this is zero minus seven on top, and you're gonna have zero minus zero minus 14 on the bottom. So any term with an x gets a zero, the other terms will stay as is, and then you simplify. Well, this is just negative seven over negative 14, which reduces down to one half, right? One half or 0.5. And so the y-intercept then is zero comma, no, I'll put 0 0.5, doesn't matter if it's decimal or fraction there, okay? Next, I gotta find the horizontal and oblique asymptotes. Well, or, or oblique asymptotes, I should say. Remember, it's only gonna be one or the other, and you can only have one of each. Um, and the way that we determine that is based upon the leading coefficients. Notice here, my leading coefficients are, or actually, no, sorry, not the leading coefficients, uh, the degrees. We gotta compare the degrees first. Remember, if the degree on bottom is bigger than the degree on the top, then the um, where is it? The horizontal, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote and it's going to be at zero. Okay? If the two degrees are the same, that's where you look for the leading coefficients. I got a little ahead of myself there. Okay, so for, a hor for the horizontal asymptote in this case, it's going to be y equals zero or the x axis because the degree on the bottom is bigger than the degree on the top. Okay? I would write that reasoning out, but I'm saving some space here. Um, and there will not be any oblique asymptote. Okay, so no oblique asymptote again because the two degrees are not the same. Oh, I'm sorry, oblique asymptote is where the top has a higher degree than the bottom. So uh, no oblique asymptote for that reason. Okay, so now I want to find points of intersection with the horizontal or oblique asymptote. Of course, here's a horizontal. So I want to find all intersections with the x-axis. Well, I've already done that, actually. That's in the x-intercept. Now, in the event that we had something different for our horizontal asymptote, let's say, let's say we ended up with the same, um, same degree, and you had to take the coefficients, uh, the ratio, <coughs> excuse me, the ratio of the leading coefficients to be your horizontal asymptote. Let's say it was like two over one, okay? Well, in that case, then you set the function equal to that number, like two over one, whatever that ratio is, and then solve the resulting equation, okay? So it's not the case in this particular one, all right? Um, but whatever the horizontal asymptote is, you would set that equal to the rational function. Now, in this case, it's just zero, but if you had a different value there other than zero, you would plug it in here, you would multiply both sides by the denominator, and then solve for x, okay? Could be a little bit of a process, could end up with a quadratic um, function somewhere along the line. Um, but I'm not gonna have to do that here because we already know that because it's an x intercept, or the x-axis, we're gonna intercept at the x, uh, intercept. We're gonna intersect at the x-intercept. Okay, so six is basically done. Now seven is the actual plot, okay? Um, I'm gonna need a little space, but I think we have enough room here. Okay, so I've got my x, y axes, and I've got a plot. First thing are my vertical asymptotes. I like to put those in right away. Uh, seven and negative two, all right? So I'm gonna put some tick marks, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe out to ten. And on the negative side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's probably good enough. And vertically, <clears throat> um, well, my y-intercept is at a half. Um, everything, ha everything else happens very close to the x or the x-axis, but I'll go up maybe five or so. One two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. That gets pretty good, pretty good view, I think. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna plot all of this information. So first things again, the vertical asymptotes. Negative two.
and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, I didn't draw it very vertically on top. Okay, so there's my two vertical asymptotes. Um, X-intercept is at 3.5. 1, 2, 3 and a half. That's about there. Uh, the, <coughs> the horizontal asymptote right across the x-axis there, so I'm not even going to really have to draw anything there. The y-intercept is at 0.5. So that's the half right there. Well, that pretty much tells me everything I need to know. Um, and you say, well, you've got two points and a couple vertical lines. How can you get the rest of the graph from that? Well, first of all, it comes from the multiplicities. The multiplicities are very, very critical here. Um, we know that the graph is going to cross the x-axis at 3.5, right? So the graph is above on the left. It's got to go through and come down below, okay? So I know that for a fact. Um, and so it's going to go through. And I also know that it can't come back and cross again because I don't have any other x-intercepts. So it's, once it gets down below, it stays down below. And once it gets above, it stays above. <clears throat> now, for that reason, I can tell you what the middle shape of this graph is. Um, It's going to be very hard to draw this, unfortunately. Um, okay, it's going to shoot up to the uh, vertical asymptote there on the left, and then it's going to come down. It has to, again, cross the x-axis here, and it's going to shoot down to the uh, vertical asymptote on the right. Okay. Okay, so that gives me, that fills in the middle. Just based upon the multiplicity, that gives me pretty much all the information I need for that. Now, the multiplicities on the vertical asymptotes are also important because we said that it's going to approach them in opposite directions. So if on the right here, the graph goes up to the asymptote, well, then it's going to have to go down to the asymptote on the left of it. Okay, so here, the graph should look something like that on the left. Same thing on the right. If it's going down to the asymptote on the left, it's going to have to go up to the asymptote on the right. Oops. Got myself a little wobble in the graph right there. Okay. All right. That looks pretty decent. Um, and I think that would give me a complete graph. If there was any other uh, bits of information, I'd want to plot those in as well. Okay, so as I look at my graphing calculator, <laughs> where to find it, um, we'll see if that works out nicely. Let's see if it worked. So I'm going to go to my calculator here. I'm going to type in the original function. Um, again, putting the top in parentheses and the bottom in parentheses. So 2x minus 7. Divide by uh, x squared minus 5x minus 14. Okay, and you can see, of course, it chops some of that denominator off, but you can see how I typed it in. Must surround it with parentheses. And then I'm going to go to, uh, actually, I'm not going to go to zoom. I'm going to try to get the same basic window that we have here. So I'm going to my window button. And I'm just going to type in, for the x direction, a minimum we have negative 8 in there. And a maximum over a 10, I believe, is what I had. <clears throat> and then my y max and min were both at 5. Negative 5 and 5. Okay, so that's what I have for my window. Hopefully that'll be a nice graph, a graph. And... You can see it showing up. Does that look like what we drew? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so I've got my vertical line at 7, vertical um, asymptote at negative 2, got my y-intercept at 2. Looks pretty good. I don't see any issues there. Um, there's no holes in the graph. There's nothing else weird going on. So looks like a good graph to me. Um, so you can always verify these using the calculator. 
Okay, um, so hopefully that helps. Um, we'll do one more example in the next video to kind of tie everything together, but I think uh, that gives you a pretty good idea of uh, what we're looking for.